Hey there, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan, and this is a 1993 Nissan Skyline V-Spec, so the limited edition later model one, with the RB26 inline six-cylinder 2.6 liter twin turbo engine. And yes, the GTR R32, this one is in extremely good condition and we're running out of good condition R32s. I'm very happy to be buying this one, especially considering it's a V-Spec. Uh, we haven't bought a V-Spec in a while. They tend to charge a premium. They are the later model one with a few changes. I'll get into that in a second. 104,000 kilometers. We'll take a look at the condition of the car compared to the auction sheet. This one's going, I believe, to the USA. Let me just check. Yeah, to the New York area. Let's switch off the engine. Before we do that, I'm gonna give you a little rev. Actually, let me do it from the engine room. Um, engine is a little bit noisy, so I'm not sure if you can hear this properly, but. Individual throttle bodies are stock on the GTR. I'm 95% sure it's been high cammed. It hasn't been sold as one. There were no notes about that, but I believe it has high lift camshafts. And uh, it is a distinct feel that you get in the RB26s when you have that. Uh, we have sold a number of them with the high lift camshafts, whether it be just like the Tomei cams or the HKS high lift V cam. Uh, v cam system, not to get off topic here a little bit, but the V cam system adds variable valve timing to the car and costs about 6,000 to, or 600,000 to a million yen or so, depending on what it is, plus installation, and it allows you to have a high lift camshaft on both sides with adjustable valve timing. Very cool. Okay, I'm gonna lower the hood here. I will mention that there's no rust on either strut tower. And so that's looking really nice and good. Has an aftermarket oil cap. It has aftermarket HKS intake, so double pods. This one has a set of aftermarket turbos. You can't see it, they're HKS twins. I think they're like a 2530 or something like that. And then the timing belt has been changed at 2019, April 23rd. Oh, 23rd, I wonder if they did that on, uh, on purpose because 23 is pronounced Nissan, like Nissan. Interesting. At 93,816 kilometers, has an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator, aftermarket injectors. Like it seems like somebody did this car proper. And I feel like the, the smaller twin turbo, aftermarket turbos are a, such a great match for this car. Sure, you can get more power if you go to a bigger single, but I really, really love the feel of like, like stock plus, and you can get a really nice feeling car. Um, as a result of that. It also has uh, this box here is your uh, boost controller and it looks like your clutch master has been changed at some point. Okay, let's lower the hood. And it's an aluminum hood for the GTRs. The uh, non-GTRs got the steel hood. Um, here's the sheet. Uh, first off, it says, wondering if he needs to uh, repair the crack or replace the windshield in Japan. So the crack is right here, right between my fingers. I don't think it's something that needs repair or replacement. It's considered a crack as it goes through the windshield, but it doesn't look like it's something that can move, that can like split or uh, extend. It is very, very minor. Also, these gaskets for the GTR uh, are not available from the original product run. You can get them in a re-product run, but they are very, very expensive because they were a big failure item and these ones are in tip-top condition so I wouldn't mess around with that if I were you I don't think it's worth getting that windshield replaced now back to the sheet here 1993 Skyline GTR V spec they made a V spec 1 in 93 and a V spec 2 in 94 I actually don't know the difference between the two. So somebody in the comments, if you do know the difference, please let us know. I know that the V-Spec 1 and the V-Spec 2 are very similar to one another. It could just be the year that they are different, uh, and that's it, I'm not sure. It's an auction grade R because it's been in an accident. My personal opinion is the accident was rather small. There's more damage on the rear than there is on the front, but it is, I'd say, a one out of 10 on the front or two out of 10 in the front in terms of severity of, of accident, and the rear maybe a four out of 10. There is a little bit of a misalignment between the trunk and the fender, and then like uh, the trunk and the tail light here, if you look closely. 
typically accidents in Japan are fairly small. Oh, we just got pooped on. Not cool, birds. <laughs> um, and body shops don't usually have frame pullers here. There might be a handful of frame pullers in the country because when we needed a frame pulled, nobody would do it for us. We absolutely couldn't find somebody. I'm sure there are some, but we couldn't find some. Uh, anyways, back to this. Interior grade C, that's being harsh. It is much better, especially, you know, you've see, we've seen probably over 100 of these, or I've seen them personally and inspected them and whatnot for export. The interior of this one is very, very good considering the age of the car. Okay, so 104, 990 kilometers. There's a dollar sign here, so more on that in a second. It's a five-speed manual, alloy wheels, power steering, power windows, original gunmetal gray. About half of them are this color. It's the the most common color for these cars. Sales points are a GTR V-Spec HKS turbo conversion. Like a stock that comes twin turbo, but HKS a uh, bigger and a steel turbo instead of a ceramic. HKS um, power flow exhaust or power flow. That might be the intake, pardon me. Fujitsubo exhaust, HKS piping for the intercooler. In 1995, when the car was just at 10,072 kilometers, the gauge set was changed with a 320 kilometer an hour gauge set. It has a history paper for that. The mileage at the moment shows 94,889, and so you combine the mileage before the change and the mileage after the change, and you get this much mileage. Of course, when we have the dollar sign and we have a history of this, it's not guaranteed, it hasn't been changed more than once. That said, I I've looked over the car and it does look and feel very much like a nice low mileage car. It has an HKS F-Con V Pro. And just getting back to that comment that I said there, the GTR is a car that you can feel mileage in. It's just one of those cars. I think you can in many cars, but the GTR is absolutely one of the easier ones to feel mileage in. So, and I think that's part of the reason why people pay a huge premium for the low mileage ones. Okay, HKS FCON V Pro is an aftermarket computer. Um, SARD injectors, SARD fuel regulator, aftermarket. Uh, what is this? Front pipe? Okay, so uh, part of the exhaust piping. Aftermarket uh, stabilizer, like a sway bar. Uh, Cusco upper arms for the suspension, and lowered with a question mark. Here's a, a funny little thing, like. The suspension is squatting in the rear. I can see aftermarket shocks. I don't see any adjustable suspension. I feel like you're going to need to replace the suspension with a set of coilovers. That's something we can do here in Japan if you want, uh, or you can do it in the country when it lands, but shocks can be a little bit hard to get for this in USA because you're not actually allowed to export for them from Japan unless it's in a container. And so it becomes a little bit difficult. Yes, they can be installed here in Japan if you want. Okay. Um, what's this? Maintenance notes and owner's manual are sent and uh, pillow tension rod is an aftermarket part as well, as well. Report from the auction inspector. Front accident has been repaired. Interior dirty, the seat and steering wheel wear. Fender arches modified. Um, let's just have a feel for that. Yeah, they've been rolled heavily, so they weren't always on those these wheels. And by the way, these are the OEM wheels only for the V-Spec, a very rare wheel. And these ones have been restored. Not a perfect restoration. The paint isn't perfect, but they do look great. And they don't have any scratches or bad paint, on, like, um, like faded paint or peeling paint anywhere. And still contain the original Skyline center caps. And so for somebody who wants to bring this to a car show... These wheels on a V-Spec still is a, a very attractive package. By the way, Brembo calipers for the V-Spec. Okay, right front inner panel has been replaced and dented. Right front inner panel uh, dented and various scratches, dents and repairs. Dashboard distorted and seat color faded. I showed you the crack of the windshield. It has been repainted on both sides. It's actually been fully repainted. Hood and fender have been replaced. And then it says scuff on the front bumper, but no large scratches or dents anywhere on the car. Okay, let's take you for a tour around it. It has been repainted. The repaint, I would give it a six or seven out of 10. It gives it a nice, consistent 
shiny and glossy look. When you look at it close, you can tell that it is not original paint, and that is going to annoy some people more than others. I don't think it's terrible. These cars are now 30 plus years old, and as a result, any original paint is not going to look good anyway. And so this isn't like a car from the 60s where you can make original paint look good again. For the most part, a 30 year old, like any paint from 1989 to 1985, 1995, it's just not going to look good anymore unless it's been stored in a garage. And garage stored cars don't really exist very much here in Japan. So yeah, the repaint I think improves the look of the car, especially when you see it on the street. The curb appeal of this car is really good. And oh my gosh, do the R32s ever look better now than I think they ever have ever since 1995. Um, 1995 being when the R33s came out. They're such a classic look. They are very muscular. The fenders have been pushed out front and rear and it's subtle. But when you see it on the street, and you don't normally see cars like this on the street, it really makes a great impression. You're like, wow, that's such a cool car. I could only imagine what these were like in 1989, the first year of production. Okay, so the front bumper has been converted over to a Nismo unit. The Nismo bumper is a homologation special, allowing it to race with this bumper. They needed more airflow for the radiator slash intercooler, so a couple of little inlets were installed, as well as a little trim piece here to direct a little bit more air through the radiator on the top. Headlights are made of glass so they don't fade, which is cool. And we have a chassis hook that has been installed here. Um, there is a little bit of separation here, not too bad, and a little bit of denting in the intercooler. It's also been painted black. Okay, there's probably a few minor rock chips in the front end. Here's one here. It's not too, too bad. The hood has a little bit of a hazy paint, hence why it's not a 8 or a 9 out of 10. You can kind of see it there. And a few places on the body are like that as well. Coming down here is generally looking good, but you'll see a little bit of wave at this angle but it is consistent around the car. Like it, it doesn't look like one panel painted here, one panel painted there. Okay, not sure why, but the interior is a bit hazy. My guess is like the interior was cleaned with some sort of a product and then stored for like uh, some time and then the product off gassed and fogged up the windows. This is the stock spoiler for the GTR. You can actually take a look at what the GTR spoiler was supposed to look like online. Um, and then they just re redid it right at the end to make it a little bit taller. And I'm glad they did because this spoiler is, uh, it's not comically large. It's effective. It has a, what is that called? A gurney flop right there at the end and on the sides. And this one here has the Nismo uh, spoiler. So technically wing slash spoiler. But if you put the two together like they are on the Nismo version of the car, um, it more acts as just a spoiler because it limits the effectiveness of the wing because you're ruining any of the airflow underneath it. Okay, aftermarket exhaust. And yeah, GTRs, even the stock ones, the engine has a very unique and special feeling to it. And if you've owned one or if you've driven one, especially back to back next to a different, like a, a non-GTR Skyline, it is very, very special. It's more, it's closer to a race engine than it is a, uh, like a passenger version of an engine. And uh, not many cars do that. More, it seemed like more cars did that in the 70s and 80s than they do, than they do nowadays. Uh, an exception to that might be like the GTR engine now, the R35. Okay, so the, uh, the trunk can't be opened with the trunk pump. Again, if you know what it is, let me know in the comments about that. You pull this, it doesn't come up. That's a problem on several of these GTRs. By the way, GTR key, very cool. So pop that and then go put the keys back inside the car. And open this up. Fairly clean, there's a little bit of pilling in the bottom carpet and then some random wires in here for speakers and uh, an alarm. I don't know why you would put the alarm there, but 
I guess it's not in the engine room. Uh, underneath here, they've put some foam, I guess, for like sound deadening. That's not original. No signs of any rust or anything in there. It's quite clean. And all of our liners fit properly and nicely in here. So, it feels good. Close this off. Door card has a little bit of deformation in it. Okay, so there's a tiny rip right here, a couple little areas of deformation, and one more pronounced part here. Okay, there's a little bit of pilling and a little bit of fade. Not too, too bad though. Seats, some of my favorite OEM seats. The fact that these seats are now 30, like 1989, right? Coming on 35 years old. So, still some of the best seats and they tend to stay in pretty good condition compared to your average seat of that age. Yes, they do rip in this section here, but the foam tends to stay in pretty good condition. It doesn't deteriorate underneath there as much as a lot of vehicles do. So I'm pretty happy about that. And for my body shape, they're a very nice comfy seat that holds me well, but doesn't feel constrictive. This is the original steering wheel. It's a little bit big by today's standards, but it kind of suits the car. It is an older car. And then floor mats have a GTR badge, but it's not an OEM GTR seat, uh, floor mat. It's a little bit of a tear in there. Okay. Gauge set says 300 kilometers an hour, but it doesn't say Nismo on it, which is a little bit strange, right? You would expect that to say Nismo on the gauge set if it was a Nissan one. Okay, a little bit of wear on the e-brake handle. A little bit of wear on the, um, the boot for the shifter, as well as the shift knob. Has uh, no ashtray, no smell of cigarettes inside. Aftermarket CD player. Uh, AC doesn't work. Again, something you would want to have on the mentioned on the auction sheet, but they missed it. The fan works fine. It just blows hot air out, though. And then we got uh, aftermarket mines gauge set. And this replaces the original Nissan one that goes there. And so it's not really that special. You're getting basically the same thing. It just says mines and it's white face instead. Now, if you know the GTR, you know that these dashboards warp like crazy. This one is no different, uh, but it is a milder warp than your average one. And so that's a nice little win. Uh, if you do want to replace it with a dashboard that's not damaged, you can do that. Still, you can tend to find those dashboards, but they are very expensive. Last I checked, they were around $1,500 for a dashboard. I think they're considerably more now, as fewer and fewer of them are in that condition. This floor mat has um, an integrated slotting for roll cage. It's like a perforated on the underside. Um, I have never seen anything quite like this. Do you see that? And I suspect it's for putting a roll cage because that's right where the roll cage usually mounts. Your aftermarket computer is just here and the F-Con can be a little bit difficult to find somebody to tune it, but it will need to be potentially retuned for the fuel. An eyelet here for a racing belt. Rear seats that are barely used and have nice bolstering too. They'll hold the rear passengers in a good position if you're going to be driving uh, a little bit quickly. And uh, I don't mean to flame anyone. I have driven both these and Supras. I adore both cars. This one, to me, is the better car, hands down. Um, I'm not talking about speed. I'm talking about pleasure of owning. Uh, it would be this one 10 times out of 10, in my opinion. So, that's going to be all for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, <laughs> before I end, I know I'm going to get called out for this because I know not everyone watches it until the end. The V-spec differences, the Brembo brakes, the wheels, and you get a different ALSD system in it, I believe. So your um, four-wheel drive system is instead of like um, 10 per second, it's 100 per second or something like that. So you get a faster four-wheel drive system. That The way these work is the rear-wheel drive until it needs the power in the front, and then it gives the front-wheel drive. So you slip here, and then it starts. It's very much like the Volkswagen systems, the Holodeck system, or the Volvo system as well. Um, a faster version of that that is more complicated and takes into uh, um, consideration more parameters. 
I, I don't have much to say about how it feels in comparison because I haven't driven either of them hard enough to know like the difference because you really have to start uh, like sliding your tires in order to feel it and I've never driven a GTR that fast before okay uh, that that will be the end of the report hope you enjoyed it um, any questions let us know thanks so much and have a nice day